Aphrodite was the Olympian goddess of beauty, love, fertility, and desire. It's said that this Greek goddess was born from the foam and waves of the sea, giving her a mysterious air that surrounds all that she encounters and enchants them. Gods and mortals alike fell for her charm often. Despite being portrayed meekly, Hephaestus was described as the rather ungrateful god of fire and forges. He was the opposite of what Aphrodite wanted and desired for herself. According to the Greek mythos, Hephaestus' mother was disgusted by his unpleasant looks and was banished from Olympia, the kingdom of the gods. As a result of the humiliating rejection from his mother, he decided to exact revenge against her and built a magical throne for Hera. Once she was seated upon a throne, she was unable to move and stuck in place. Hera pleaded with her son to be free, but Hephaestus had one condition that had to be met in order for her to gain her freedom. Give him Aphrodite to be his wife. Zeus granted this wish, knowing Aphrodite's true nature, that she would need a husband strong enough to tame her wildness and more sensual needs. Hephaestus tried and tried again to win over Aphrodite's love and affection, but no matter what he designed and gave her, she had no interest in the god, and Zeus's plan had failed. However, whenever she was given a chance, Aphrodite was unfaithful to him with both gods and mortals. But then there was Hephaestus' brother Ares, the god of war, who madly fell in love with Aphrodite. Unlike his other lovers, Ares wanted to win Aphrodite over and gain her love. With gifts and compliments, Ares was relentless in his strife to win over Aphrodite until one day it worked. The two lovers took advantage of the time that Hephaestus spent in his workshop, spending their time together until dawn. For the ancient Greek gods and goddesses, love affairs were allowed, but they were not allowed to have a second lover and maintain the relationship. This was, in other words, formal infidelity, which is what Aphrodite's and Ares' relationship was. In order to keep their affair secret, Ares brought along Electrion, whose job was to be their lookout for Helios, the sun, when it began to appear on the horizon. Helios saw everything and one day, when Electrion fell asleep while on watch, did not alert the lovers to the break of dawn. Helios, upon finding the lovers tangled between the sheets that they shared together, told Hephaestus what was happening, and in his true fashion, the god of fire began to plan his revenge. He created a net made of hold threads that were so thin they couldn't be seen by the naked eye. Hephaestus laid the net above the bed and lied to Aphrodite by saying he was going on a trip. Upon hearing the news, Ares once more came to visit Aphrodite. In their intimate moments, the net of gold threads fell on them, entrapping the Olympians together in the bed. Hephaestus summoned all the gods to be present to witness their act of adultery, and laughed for so long that the myths say their laughs were eternal. The lovers were then forced to go their separate ways. In the wake of the accident, Ares punished Electrion by turning the boy into a rooster, forcing him to sing each time the sun appeared in the sky in the mornings. Through the affair, Ares and Aphrodite had a child, Eros, and though they were not allowed to see each other again, the pair went on to have seven more children together. In her entrapment, Hephaestus refused to release Aphrodite and Ares until he had been paid back for his marriage gifts. Zeus wanted nothing to do with the lovers, leaving them to fend for their own fates, while his brother Poseidon, the god of the sea, who upon seeing the naked goddess fell in love and offered the surety that Ares would be the one to repay him. Hephaestus warned Poseidon that if Ares did not repay the debts owed, Poseidon would become entrapped under the gold netting in his place. Grateful for his aid in freeing her from Hephaestus' gold net, Aphrodite went with Poseidon, where they then formed a relationship of their own. The goddess bore Poseidon at least two children, a daughter named Rhode and another named Herophilus. It was during this time, however, that Aphrodite also bore Ares with many of their other seven children together. In the end, Ares defaulted and never paid his debts to Hephaestus, but nothing had ever come of it at the same time. He never divorced Aphrodite either. Hephaestus learned to tolerate Aphrodite's infidelities and live with them. After these events, Aphrodite continued to have sexual affairs with many other gods and mortals. The timeline of Aphrodite's love affairs is hazy and not exactly defined clearly by writers, storytellers, or artists that spoke of her stories. The goddess of love and desires provoked countless relationships in her lifetime, many of them with other gods, but there were two mortal men that captured her heart as no others had before, Adonis and Anchises. The story of Adonis is a peculiar one, but he was deeply loved by Aphrodite. His story begins with his mother, Mira. She was the daughter of Theus, the king of Syria. It's said that Aphrodite punished Mira because she did not show the proper respect the goddess deserved. Aphrodite cursed Mira with fatherly desire, tricking her into falling in love with her own father. 
Within the darkness of his bedchambers, Mira sneaked into her father's bedroom for seven days and seven nights to commit incestual acts and through this union, Mira became pregnant with a son Adonis. One night, Theos brought an oil-lit lamp into the bedroom in order to find out who his mystery visitor was, only to find out in horror that it was his daughter. Enraged, Theos tried to kill her with a sword, but Mira was able to escape. Stricken with grief and disgust in herself, Mira pleaded to the gods to change her form. She neither wanted to live nor die, as she felt she would be hated and undeserving of either option. As a result of this, the gods came up with the best option that would fit the situation, and so Mira was turned into a mirth tree. Several months later, when a wild boar broke open the mirth tree, Adonis fell from the trunk of the tree, birthing him. The moment that Aphrodite first laid eyes upon him, she fell in love. In order to protect the child, she gives Adonis to Persephone to protect and raise. This led to a very peculiar situation between the sisters. During a time with Adonis, he grew to become a very handsome young man, causing Persephone to fall in love with him as well. She refused to give Adonis back to Aphrodite, creating a dispute between the two goddesses. Zeus was forced to intervene and decide what happens to Adonis. It is decided that Adonis would be split into thirds. A third of the year would be spent with each goddess, and the final third of the year he would be forced to spend alone to learn how to care for himself. In some renditions of this story, it's said that in the final third of his year that he was able to choose whomever he wanted to spend his time with instead. Many stories say that he chose to spend two-thirds of the year with Aphrodite, who went on to have a happy relationship together that bore two children, Bero and Gorgos. Adonis grew to become a great hunter as his life went on. There are two different versions of Adonis' death, the first one being that Artemis had become jealous of Adonis' skills as a hunter. In a jealous rage, Artemis sent a wild boar to attack Adonis during one of his hunting expeditions, causing him to bleed to death. The other version speaks of Ares sending the wild boar after the hunter, also in a jealous rage to kill him. As Adonis bled out, Aphrodite held him in her arms until his final breath. The final story of today's video isn't quite as heartbreaking as Adonis's was. Aphrodite's and Anchise's love was brief, and some argue not quite as heartfelt as her relations with Ares and Adonis were. Anchises was the son of Capis and Themiso and was best known as one of Aphrodite's many lovers. The goddess disguised herself as a Phrygian princess in order to seduce Anchises without him knowing of her true identity. For two weeks, the pair shared many intimate times together until Aphrodite fell pregnant with a child, Aeneas, a Trojan hero. Aphrodite appeared before Anchises with the child, revealing herself to him. She warned him not to boast of the relations, but he did not heed her warning, causing Zeus to throw down a thunderbolt towards him, either burning and or crippling Anchises. Anchises went on to later marry Areopis, who they bore at least one child together, a daughter named Hippodamia. It was during the fall of Troy as the end of the Trojan War came near that Anchises and Aphrodite's son Aeneas aided in Anchises' escape. When Zeus threw down his thunderbolt, the god rendered Anchises unable to walk or use his legs. The stories of Aphrodite of those of love and lust, her charm caused many to fall in love with and become enamored with her beauty. While it is never said explicitly whether or not she broke the hearts of men and gods, Aphrodite certainly had a heart broken many times. Perhaps there are lessons to be learned in her stories, but when it really comes down to it, Aphrodite used her beauty and charms to achieve the level of love and intimacy she truly desired.